before I, I get to answer your questions, it'd be interesting to know how much you know about me. I know that you produced Shutter Island. But that's it. You only know that I produced Shutter Island and this here is Black Swan. That's it. You don't know any more about me than what we were just talking about, right? So they're just, just say no. I mean, I'm not, it doesn't matter. But that's okay. What defines independent cinema for you? Well, it's, it's cinema that's not financed by a major company, but sold to a major company after it's been financed, either pieced together or otherwise. It's fairly independent. Or if you, if you want to put foreign films, for example, fall into the independent cinema because they're sold to the majors, you know, like Sony Classics or uh, Fox Searchlight, what used to be the Weinstein Brothers company, Miramax maybe, if they ever go back into distribution. That probably is the extent of independent cinema, or anybody out there who actually cobbles together some money and makes a film. And there's like, you know, like 2,000 or 3,000 of those that get made a year and don't get distributed by anybody. This definition is based pretty much solely on where financing is coming from. This has yeah. no indication of genre, story, character. No, because the, the, you know, the independent filmmaker can only get so much money. He can't, get the, he can't compete with the big companies that are spending 150 to $200 million a movie and spending another $100 million a movie to, to uh, distribute it and to market it. Where do you see independent cinema going? You know, in that recent years, we've seen a kind of a drought to... Maybe it's a lot of people said, well, maybe it's just a, a bit of a wave and we go up and we go down and so on and so forth. But I, I think that the it's probably up and down, uh, depending on how successful a year is. But, you know, the majors are not looking for smaller films. They just aren't because it's too expensive for them to distribute them. The marketing, if you market a picture that costs a $10 million, say I'm using a number, it could be any number, but a low number, um, you know, for it to fit into a distribution pattern, let's assume that the picture does $40 million, you know, then they'll make, you know, they'll make less than if they make a $150 million movie and can do $400 million uh, because they have high overheads. You know, these companies run, you know, about, if I were to do the numbers kind of, I'd say, a studio costs just to open its doors a year somewhere between 250 to 300 million dollars just to open the door and that means you got to recoup that money then um, they spend uh, a billion and a half dollars or somewhere near thereabouts in making product and another half a billion dollars uh, just distributing product so, it, you know, it's an expensive art form. The interesting thing about independent filmmakers is they, get in, they can do it one of two ways, right? They can go because they say, I'm going to make a movie for a million dollars, like Saw, for example. That's an independent film, right? They financed it, they made it, they sold it to a major, and made a lot of money. And that's a reason to make a film. Now, the chances are is that they weren't doing it because they were interested in the art form. They were interested in making money. Right. And then there are those who say, you know, I want to make a movie that makes money or, or returns its investment, but um, I want to have control over it because I don't want to hear any, you know, a lot of people's opinions about what it ought to be and what it could be and what it should be. And I'm going to find independent financing to do it, and at the end of it, hopefully I'll sell it to somebody. And those, you know, that's hard to do. It's a very difficult process. You take... Um, you know, Black Swan in the last minute, you know, it, it was a touch and go for, you know, the longest time. I mean, I think the day before we were to start the movie, we weren't sure whether Fox was going to be there or not. You, when you're looking to produce a project, what are you, what are your... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm story and character driven, you know, I'd like to find a really good story, you know, that is imaginative, somewhat different, because I'm getting, you know, I get bored with the same thing over and over again. And maybe that's in my personality, or maybe it's in my genes, or whatever. I'm inspired, actually, by, you know, movies that were done 
in the 40s and 30s and 20s and and European filmmakers and you know the people whose work I like and I don't I can't be put in a bag I don't want to be you know the guy who just makes independent films I don't want to be the guy that just makes big films um, you know I, I like all genres of movies do you have a particular type of filmmaker you like working with I you know I've gone back to the same filmmakers I've worked you know with uh, Martin Scorsese four times I've worked with Milos Forman uh, five or six times I worked with uh, Woody Allen 13 times, um, you know, Phil Kaufman, um, Al Ashby, uh, I mean, I'm going back now a little bit. Um, you know, I like the same people because they're reliable, you know, and sometimes they were great and it worked and other times it didn't work. Everybody needs some sort of feedback on their work and you do that with people you trust, you know, that they're not going to basically take, you know, um, a potato and make it into a cabbage. In working with some of these directors who, you know, you look at Woody Allen and he's he was an independent filmmaker, then mm -hmm. he was a studio filmmaker, and now he's an independent filmmaker again. And it's on a project-by-project project well, basis. You know, that's, that's why it goes to the issue of definition of independent filmmaker, right? I mean, Woody worked with United Artists for a number of years. He's worked with Sony Classics. He's worked with, you know, he needs to get distribution. He needs to get distribution with a distributor, you know, that can get his movies out there. Um, you know, we did a couple at TriStar with him. You know, he did some at Orion. He did a number of movies with us. I mean, you know, there go that goes to the definition of Woody as being an independent filmmaker. Woody Allen says, I get final cut. I make the movie that I want to make, and then you guys distribute it. Here it is, and this is as much as I want to do. And that makes him independent. Yes, he's an independent filmmaker by definition, but it's released by a major company. You have Black Swan out with Darren, and yeah. what what is what is it to work with him in light of all these amazing filmmakers I mean, I, I, that you have worked I wish I could with. say I wish I could say I know Darren really well, you know, and could dig, delve into who he is and what he is. Um, I don't, you know. That's uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money on this movie. Um, he shot the movie in New York. We had a script that, you know, we all agreed is a script that we liked. Um, he went out, made the movie. Uh, we got the money as a result of the fact that he was involved in it. Um, and the movie is what it is, and it's a Darren Aronofsky movie. It's not, it doesn't say Mike Metavoy's movie. For me, it was um, a, a kind of look at All About Eve, you know, fame, um, the drive to be a star, the drive to do whatever you do better than anybody else, to do it to its utmost perfection. And that's basically the movie that uh, Darren and Natalie did. As goes the world goes Hollywood. It's not the other way around. It's not like Hollywood is, you know, setting the trend and setting the pace. The rest of the world is setting the pace and we're kind of following it. Um, you know, fewer companies to distribute. I mean, MGM, for all intents and purposes, you know, will be doing fewer movies doesn't exist. And that's one of the great, you know, names in American cinema. And the companies have just grown exponentially to be all kinds of things. They're no longer just, you know, movie companies. They're TV companies. They're animation companies. They're um, game companies. They're uh, television companies. They're, you know, they're all the various things that make it into these kind of mega businesses. I mean, are they better, you know, by doing it? Mm, that's a you know that's a question that one would have to ask a lot of other people to get a consensus. My my sense is um, more is not better. Better is better. And uh, the definition of better to me is you know do we get lots of people to experience them? I mean we're getting to a climate as I see it, especially with the internet. You know where there is a lot more out there in the in the ethos and in the ether of the of what we see um, that feeds into making more interesting material, more interesting movies, you know. Um, and I think, and I've said this to others, you know, that I think there'll be more uh, terrific filmmakers. Uh, coming into the business and working 
uh, either through the independent way where they kind of get it financed because that's what they have to do in order to, to crash through the gates of Babylon or not. Now there's a new definition of film out there, right? Which is DIY. You've heard that before, right? Do it yourself. Yeah. Right? Which is yeah. no money movies. Yeah. Right? Which the Independent Spirit Awards yeah. likes to take a moment and like yeah. recognize those films. Yeah. Have you seen some of those films before? You know, I've seen a few that... You know, some of them are really kind of crude, you know, in yeah. the sense that they, they, when they get made. I think they're kind of interesting. I mean, years ago there was the same thing, you know. I remember that kind of in that, that kind of movement that existed. Uh, Vernon Zimmerman probably doesn't mean anything to you, but, you know, I know Vernon Zimmerman, you know, from movies that he did. <clears throat> there, were, there were a whole group of those. Then there were those who worked for Corman, for example, which was another group, you know, Roger Corman we're talking about, who did some really interesting, you know, films. Um, um, I mean, they name one of the awards is John Cassavetti's award, who yeah, would there, definitely there fall a, in, into I mean, DIY. I knew, I, knew, I knew, yeah, I knew John, actually, and, you know, the, the way his movies got put together, you know, his Italian money or some other, you know, group, and he was an independent cuss, you know, I mean, he was basically, he wanted to do it his way. I mean, he put a camera in front of, a, you know, a bunch of actors who were his friends and made movies. Um, you know, are they my favorite type of movies? No, they're not. I mean, if you ask me what my favorite type of movies are, I would say Lawrence of Arabia would be, you know, my kind of movie. There's a, a brand new group coming into the business, you know, like David Fincher, you know. Uh, David's been working in commercials for years, uh, you know, and there's a crop of new filmmakers that are coming in that have been working with the camera for a long time, and they're capturing a different, um, a different ethos out there. A different, you know, they're they're very self-assured in most cases, which I find kind of interesting because, you know, I usually go to the self-assured, but show me what you did, you know, first. Um, you know, I mean, I've been working in this for, I don't know, 48 years. I'm not that self-assured. The part that I enjoy the most is finding something really difficult to get made and getting it done. That's the part I really like. But, you know, I'm not stupid enough to go for the kind of, you know, hey, this is never going to get done, and maybe I should just... Uh, what's that? What's a movie like that? Well, I mean... Or did they never get done? Uh, it, it, there are a lot of movies that'll never get done because they're, you know, it's, they cost too much for what they offer. You know, their audience is about this big, and and they cost about this much. You know, so it's, you know, it's, you, you go well. Thank you so much, but there's no way. We're working on a project which I'm really excited about. Um, uh, it's based um, on the Dracula book, and it's the story of the Demeter, which is the ship that took. Uh, Dracula from Varna to uh, Whitby, England, and it's what happened on the boat. Is it a horror movie? It's you know. Horror thriller. I mean, it's it. You know what? It's it's alien on a ship. That's what it is. I don't think I'll put that in there, but that's pretty awesome. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you don't mind, I'll put it in there. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who'd love to hear that. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> what do you think is is the key to to becoming a great filmmaker or making a great film, there, there must be a few things along the line that you've noticed have been consistent in the pictures that have worked well and you know, or I mean, the processes you know, that have I worked always, well. I always thought of the definition of a genius, and I'm using this a little differently than most, is someone who can actually see something and just turn it like two or three degrees left or right, and then you go, uh-huh, wow, that's different. You know, that feels familiar, but it's somewhat different. And that is something that I could probably recognize. But I think, if anything, I could say, I would say, you know, my strength is being able to recognize some of those people. You know, have I made mistakes? Of course. You know, I mean, I'm constantly making mistakes. I think there's a lot of hope for people, you know, and the hope is that, you know, they'll go out and do it on their own. I mean, the fact that you're holding a little, you know, Sony camera is, it tells you that you can do things that, you know, haven't been done, and that's exciting.